Good morning and happy Easter. This is Megan Smick. I'm the pastor at Oregon United Methodist Church, and I want to welcome you to Easter Sunday worship. Before I get started, I want to remind you that at 10 a.m. today, Easter Sunday, Jamie is going to be leading us in a hymn sing. It will be on Facebook Live. You'll find the link on our Facebook page. Please tune in. This morning, we will have a call to worship, a prayer time, an offering time where I will share a new ministry that we are being offered, a message, and we will close after the benediction with announcements. Here is our call to worship written by Cheryl Lowry. We gather, a community of faith in God's subversive world. We gather to celebrate that no darkness can extinguish light, to remember that love will always be more powerful than death, and to trust that peace will always be stronger than violence. We gather people of faith in the light of God's world. Welcome to worship. Let's pray together. Amazing God, on this Easter day, we remember your promises of renewal and redemption, forgiveness and salvation, and ask these blessings for our lives. Where we are anxious or worried, renew us. Where we struggle, redeem us with your good purposes. In places we are snared by temptation, forgive us. And always, Send your saving grace to cover us and all we love. We raise up to you Bill and Bill, Nancy, Adam, and Pat. We pray for those connected to our congregation who have been affected by COVID-19. Rod, Zach, Riley, Chris, and Jason. We raise to your light our first responders, those in the medical professions, and those standing for us in our supply chains. Give them your peace, protect them by your grace, and use their offerings for your kingdom purposes. We ask your presence on our leaders in health and government at all levels. Give them wisdom and courage, and let them abide by your call to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with you. This we raise to you, Lord, as we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For our offering today, I uh, hope that you have received an Easter letter in the mail that contained a message from me, and also information about how to continue your giving when we can't physically be together. I just want to ask that you look over that information, and please continue your giving. We can't be the church without you. For Christ in Action, I want to announce that we have been asked to engage in a new ministry, the Ogle County Health Department Emergency Preparedness Coordinator has asked us to be involved in delivering necessities to those who can't leave their homes at this time. I have heard stories from members in our congregation who are at higher risk of all the ways that they are being supported by their family and friends during this time. Try to imagine, though, what it would be like to live through this being truly alone, either to not have family who can help you, or for there to be good reasons why family is unable to be, be helpful. Where would you turn? This is an opportunity for us to be Jesus to those in our community who need him. We need organizers who can make phone calls from their home to connect our requests for help 
to those who can do errands in the community. And so we also need errand runners, those who can pick up groceries and drop them off at the homes of those who need them. If you could do either job, please let me know. Let's make sure that our community knows that Oregon United Methodist is a church that helps others and cares for our neighbors in the name of Jesus. Friends, our church building is closed, but our ministries are open. Your giving of your treasures and your time and your effort it is what sustains our life together. Let's pray over all our gifts. Gracious God, on this holiest of days, we thank you for the greatest of gifts, the resurrection of your son and the victory of life and love over death and sin. We respond with our own gifts that by our offerings, we would participate in this resurrection and victory. Use our gifts to redeem the world to your kingdom and use this time of worship and word to prepare us for it. Open our ears, our minds, and our hearts to receive you. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our scripture this morning is from Luke 24, verses 1 through 12, and I'm reading from the New International Version. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women, because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. Have you ever gotten news that was so good you found it hard to believe it was true? Once my husband Steve came home and told me that he had won several thousand dollars for a vacation to the destination of our choice in a Christmas gift lottery at work. I argued with him for a good five minutes because I was sure he was joking. But on the day after Easter, we boarded a plane for London. It was so good, it was hard to believe. The women and the apostles heard news that Sunday after Jesus died that was so good, they couldn't believe it. Jesus was alive. To get some perspective on that, let's remember where they were on Friday and Saturday. Their beloved friend they had been counting on to lead them to salvation and redemption and even out of bondage to the Romans had been brutally killed as a common criminal. All their hopes all their dreams died along with him. The miracles, the healings, the divine signs must have seemed like a meaningless joke at this point. The person and the faith that they had staked their very lives on had been utterly 
defeated. And so hearing that he was alive was good news beyond their comprehension. It defied logic. It defied everything they knew about how the world worked. We might even be thinking the same thing. The idea of Jesus' bodily resurrection isn't logical. We may think that it doesn't even fit with the laws of physics. It has more in common with a ghost story than a news item. But there's something important that the apostles and the women and we may not be taking into account. Jesus' resurrection is only a part of a pattern that we should probably expect to see. God has built the universe around a pattern of resurrection. Look around and you will see it everywhere. Look outside your window right now. The dead earth of winter is being resurrected into spring. Bare trees are budding. Green shoots are poking out of the barren ground. Birds that have been silent for months are singing their hearts out. The earth that was once shrouded in death is coming to life. We see this too in the life cycles that we are a witness to. What is old eventually dies and new life springs up. We see it in nature as tiny shoots and baby animals are coming into the world. We see it in our families, as we sometimes sadly say goodbye to an older generation. We also say hello to the next generation that we receive with joy. We see it in our own healing. We get sick or injured, and it disrupts our lives with a kind of death of our hopes and our plans. But over time, we are gradually restored to ourselves. We become strong and busy and happy and productive again. We have been bodily resurrected. We see it in acts of forgiveness. Sin can cause such pain in our lives, not only because of what it does to us, but also because of what it does to our relationships. When we get hurt, we sometimes lose relationships that we counted on. But when we are able to forgive, it allows a resurrection. Maybe our relationships are restored. Or maybe it's our own confidence or image or respect that is reborn out of the ashes of sin. We are witness to resurrection every day. As every morning, the sun comes up. The death of darkness is defeated by the light of day. This is God's plan, written into creation and into our lives. Resurrection is God's pattern in all things. Jesus rising from the grave shows us that even when the worst happens, even in the face of death, the worst thing is never the last thing because of God's resurrection pattern. We might feel like we're going through the worst thing right now. We feel stuck in a tomb of physical distancing. We miss our families. We miss Easter worship. We miss our freedom. But the worst thing is never the last thing, because God's pattern for all things is resurrection. This virus is not going to stifle us forever. God is right now working in human minds and hands and hearts to defeat death in the way that God always does. God is going to resurrect us in this. At some point, it's going to be over, and we will be resurrection people. And it's not just a resurrection of our ability to eat out at Alfano's or find hand sanitizer in the grocery store. I believe 
that we will be resurrected in mind, soul, spirit, and heart as well. I don't know what that's going to look like, but I trust that the God of hope and love is going to use this time for our good. Maybe our resurrection is going to be in a changed attitude. Maybe our gratitude is going to spill over in generosity and joy for all that God has given us. Maybe having experienced distancing, we will have revised relationship. Maybe we will stop taking our relationships for granted and appreciate each moment that we have together. And maybe even there will be relationships that are healed during this time. Perhaps our church will be resurrected. Maybe people will find new connections among us. Maybe there will be new fruit that will come of our new ministries that we have engaged in. Maybe our relationship with Jesus will experience resurrection. Maybe we are developing a greater reliance on him that will result in a lifelong, closer walk that will transform our lives. I don't know what it's going to look like. That's up to God. But I do know that God's pattern in all things is resurrection and we should expect it to be working in our lives. What the women and the apostles experienced that first Easter morning was so good that they were afraid to believe it. We won't be blamed if we are as incredulous as they were. But let's not try, or let's try to not waste too much time there. On this Easter Sunday, Let's move on to resurrection, seeing it in the world around us, witnessing it in our own lives, counting on it in the future of hope that God has planned for us, proclaiming it to a waiting world. Please pray with me. Almighty God, like the women at the tomb, like the apostles hiding in fear, we come to this Easter morning amazed by good news we can hardly believe. We thank you for the resurrection of your Son and for all it means for our lives. We thank you that by your grace the worst thing is never the last thing and that even sin and death are defeated by your everlasting love that we can count on your resurrecting grace in our lives. So fill us with it that it cannot but spill over into our love for each other. In the name of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. And may the light of his resurrection shine over you so you know his peace and reflect it to the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now announcements. We have started an online Bible study via Zoom. It's taking place on Tuesdays at 1 p.m. We're studying how God speaks to us uh, in various ways in Scripture and in our lives. Uh, you can still join if you have a computer, a laptop, a tablet, a smartphone, and you want to participate in this Zoom meeting, please let me know. Our prayer list was mailed to you early last week. Please keep your requests coming, and please keep praying. The world has lots of needs right now, and our prayers for each other is one way that we stay connected. Please continue to send your cards to Oregon Nursing Home. This is an ongoing need. They are still allowing no visitors, and nobody knows when visitors will be allowed back in. The way to address your cards is on our website and on our Facebook page. Please continue up this ministry. Uh, there are those in our congregation 
who are making uh, face masks for medical purposes and also for personal use. They need flannel, old t-shirts, elastic. You can also find elastic in bungee cords or hair bands. Um, if you can sew or if you have supplies that you can donate, please let me know and I will put you in touch with those who are involved in this ministry. If you would like a mask for your personal use, uh, please let me know and I can make that available to you. If you or somebody you know needs errands run or groceries delivered, or if you could be a point person or an errand runner in our new ministry of doing this, please be in touch with me. And we are always looking for new ministry ideas so we can continue to be the church that loves our neighbor in Oregon, even during this time of physical distancing. If you know of something like that, please let me know. I would love to hear from you. Check your email for devotions and news that will be going out two to three times a week. Um, also, these things are posted on our Facebook page and on our website. And please, if you see or read anything that is meaningful to you, please share it with anybody who you think might be interested. I am aware of a number of people who aren't members of our congregation who are listening or reading, and it's because you are sharing. So please share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Nancy and Jamie are also on our YouTube channel. Links uh, are posted to those videos as well on our Facebook page and in your email. Please like this video on the Facebook post or on the YouTube post. It helps us know that you are here and honestly your encouragement means so much to us. Please also leave comments. It's another way for us to be in touch with, the, with each other. I love you. Take care of yourself and I will see you next week.